Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Have you ever been tracking something with M-Track or Surface and something gets in front of your shot like a human being named Nick? Well, you know what? I'm gonna show you how to fix it if you have any issues. On to the tutorial. So the first thing I'd like to show you in this is that I have set a marker here and I exported this frame over into Photoshop and then I just used generative fill to generate some different images so that we can replace these on my shirt and they will cycle through. So the very first thing I'm going to do is actually prep these images to bring them in here. So I'm going to just grab all of these. I'm gonna drag them down into my timeline. And because they are all highlighted, I'm going to right click, I'm gonna change the duration, and I'm gonna change these to about 12 frames per image. So you can see here that we now have about every half a second, they are going to switch in between. I'm going to drag these beneath my clip, and then I'm going to just duplicate these. So uh, copy, Command C, and then Command V, Command V again. The reason I'm doing this is so that we make sure that I can generate a compound clip that is at least the duration of the clip we're going to track. That way it will play as if it's a video throughout the entirety of my clip. So let me highlight all of these. Option G, and we are making a compound clip. I can go ahead and delete this last gap clip that was generated as well as I'll just trim that back just so that we don't have extra frames in the end. And again, I do have this marker set. So as you can see, that is where my image is taking place. So now that I have that prepped, let's apply M Tracker surface. And I want you to understand exactly what is going on here. So in this situation, we have my shirt there. We're gonna track it, but Nick comes in front of it and he obstructs that area. So the tracking is going to fail when this happens. We already know that that's what's going to happen. This doesn't have to be a person. This could be anyone. So with that said, the first thing that I would like to do is create a mask over him so that when we're tracking my shirt, it's not going to create an issue necessarily because he's moving in front of it. I can explain it here in just a minute, but with that said, we need to come over and we need to add a mask. And then we are going to make this mask a little bit bigger than Nick is because you can see that we've got some blurring going on and those pixels would affect this track. So we're gonna make it a bit bigger all the way on the outside of the blur, as you can see there. And then I will say that if I were to track this, there will, again, there will be some issues because we have this tracking point over my hand and I'm moving. So we're gonna do a very fast manual track on this by setting some keyframes. So we have a keyframe here in the center. Let's move our playhead down to where Nick is basically out of the frame. We'll highlight all of these clips. They already have keyframes set up and we'll just move this thing in its entirety so that we now have a keyframe set at the end. As you can see, it's kind of following him. And then we'll go all the way to where Nick was coming into the frame about right there. And then we will just make some small adjustments throughout so that we make sure that that mask is moving properly with him and it's covering not only him, but the blur and everything as well. Because again, those pixels will affect this track. So as you can see here, we wanna just make sure that that is covering all of that. Okay, fantastic. So now we can go back to our image and we are going to set this to mesh, make the area selected that we know that we're going to track. Fantastic. So something that I want you to understand when you are tracking with the mesh, if you're going to want to do any sort of feathering, you actually need to do that feathering prior to tracking because this feather is going to uh, affect this mesh that we've generated. So I'm actually going to go ahead, even though we haven't tracked yet, and I'm going to apply this compound clip into my drop zone. And then we are going to change this image insert mode to full screen. And then let's go ahead and do our feathering 
The only reason for this feathering is so that we can generate a new mesh on the outside and then we will be feathering there on the inside of the mesh. I promise you it will all make sense toward the end of this tutorial. And let's regenerate our mesh. And now you can see that that mesh is now happening on the outside where that feather has happened. So we're going to go ahead and track backwards because Nick is not in the area here. And then we will talk about what happens when we track forward and how to fix it. Fantastic. Let's see how that did. That looks great. You can see that it's cycling through. We're in great shape. Now, when I track forward, we are going to have an error because he is going to move over in front of us and that's okay. So you can see that that has moved in front of us. And as a matter of fact, I do see some pixels here, so it may have even grabbed that, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So let's go ahead and move forward and we can see that it's tracked. And then our mask does unfortunately move just a bit right there, as you can see, because there were still some pixels that got in our way. So what we are going to do is from this point forward, we are going to clear our tracking forwards and hit OK. So from this point forward, we know that that's not going to move, right? It's moving up until about right there. Wonderful. Let's set our automatic to manual. And now you can see that we have all these points that are being highlighted. If I click and drag over this, you can see that I have all of these points highlighted. In this mode, this is going to automatically set keyframes for us until we need it to resume tracking automatically. So we're just going to move this forward and we can see that I moved just a little bit so we can kind of move that down. Let's continue going until Nick is out of our frame right here. Let's make sure that that point is about where it should be. And now these tracking points have all been keyframed because it does it when you're in manual mode, it kind of sets those keyframes automatically. Let's go back to automatic and we will resume tracking forward. All right, so now let's see how that looks. And you can see that that has continued tracking and let's go back and we're gonna watch and see that that is in pretty good shape right there. There does need to be a little bit more movement. So again, this is a little bit more of a manual process in this situation, but we're just gonna kind of move it frame by frame and make sure that this is moving along with me just enough where the viewer would never know that anything has really changed because Nick is moving in front of me right there. And then the automatic tracking picks right back up. Wonderful. Let's see how that looks. And you will notice that we do need to do a bit of feathering. We are gonna do that here in just a few minutes. So now the final thing is to go back and retune this mask over top of Nick because as you can see this mask is cutting that off but not a problem let's go back to our mask we can use these arrows and this is going to be the tool that moves us from keyframe to keyframe and let's just go ahead and bring these keyframes back to the areas where his shirt was blurred and we will also feather this out so that the mask is also feathered then move to our next keyframe. You can see there. Bring that down to about there and then feather these out. And you can see that that looks a lot better over top of our area that has been masked because of that feathering. It does look a lot more like the natural blur. We can move forward again. That's fine because it is over top, so it does not matter. Go to the next one. And then here we go. We need to just start scaling this back down so that we're revealing the back section and we feather it out. Okay, so now I do want to do some feathering, something that you do need to be aware of when you are doing anything uh, regarding feathering inside of the mesh tracking. This mesh area is the only area that is going to 
visibly show any sort of feathering or show any sort of um, information that you are applying. So what that means is we need to actually scale down all of these Bezier points and then you can see the mesh area right there is showing that feathering. So we are just going to make sure that we are as close as possible. And then when we're doing some feathering, as you can see there, you see that inside of the mesh area. So we want to get as close to the edge as possible. So as much of that can be feathered as possible as well. So once again, any of this area here, this feathering is not going to really do anything. It's only going to feather inside your mesh. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Nice and feathered. And there you have it. If you have any additional questions, please drop us a comment below. This tutorial was indeed inspired by a question that was left on a previous tutorial. So we do love hearing what you guys have to say, any questions so that we can give you feedback throughout these tutorials. And this could be a question about Cine Studio or anything else offered by Motion VFX. We'd be happy to help. Again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.